As data is flowing back and forth between our application and our SDN controller, it needs to be formatted. And there are different ways that we can format that data, but a really popular way is called JSON. That stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And the big goal behind having the JSON format is so that it can be readable by humans. But even though that's the goal, if we're looking at a really complex JSON data set, where there's lots of nesting going on, it could look a little bit intimidating. So our goal in this video is to simplify that for you. We want to break it down so you can look at any JSON data set and realize it breaks down to just two simple structures. The first structure is going to be called an object, and that's a collection of name value pairs. And we're going to have something else called an array, and that's an ordered list of values. Let's talk about each one of these and be able to recognize these. First, let's consider the object. The object is an unordered set of name value pairs. We've got a name, we've got a colon, and we've got the corresponding value for that name. It's almost like assigning a value to a variable in programming. And then we could have a comma and another name value pair and another comma, and another name value pair, and so on. And they're in no specific order. This is very similar to something we're going to be talking about later when we get into Python programming. It's very similar to a Python dictionary. And this object is going to be enclosed in curly brackets as opposed to straight brackets. Here's an example. Notice we've got in curly brackets a couple of name value pairs. We've got a name of first name, and notice it's in quotes because it's a string. There's a colon separator, and we've got Kevin, another string, so it's in quotes. That's the value. The value of first name is Kevin. That's the first name value pair. Then there's a comma, and we've got last name. Again, that's a string, so it's in quotes. And the value is Wallace, another string, so it's in quotes. And the name and value are, again, separated with a colon. And it's all enclosed in curly brackets. And by the way, just as a side note, notice how I've used uppercase in these names. I say first name, but the N in name is capitalized, but the F is not. The N in the last name is capitalized, but the L is not. This is something that programmers often use. It's called camel case. It's where you're combining up multiple words. And uh, when you combine multiple words, not the first word, but every other word begins with a capital letter. So we're combining first and name. Well, the F in first is not capitalized, but the N in name is. Again, that's called camel case. Now, as we look at this collection of name value pairs, we've only got two pairs, so it's not that difficult to read. But to make it more readable, you typically see this written with more white space. And what I mean by white space is we'll probably have our curly brackets on their own lines, and we'll have each of our name value pairs on their own lines. Now, we still have the comma separator. Notice after first name, colon, Kevin, there's a comma after that. So we still keep the same syntax. We're just inserting additional white space to make it more readable. And again, that's an object. That's one of two data structures that JSON uses. The other data structure is called an array. An array is an ordered set of comma-separated values. And these are enclosed in straight brackets as opposed to curly brackets. Here's an example. Here are some certifications that Cisco has. And these are string values, so they're enclosed in quotes. But I've got CCNA in quotes, comma. That's the first value. CCMP Enterprise in quotes. That's the second value and another comma. And CCI Enterprise Infrastructure enclosed in quotes. That's a third value. This is very similar to something we're going to be seeing with Python programming later on, called a Python list. And if we were to insert white space here, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have the straight brackets on their own lines, and each value is going to be on its own line. Again, we still have a comma separator. Notice after CCNA, there's a comma. After CCMP Enterprise, there's a comma. And those are the two different data structures we have. So why is this so complicated? Well, I've shown you some very basic values, but these values could be something other than just a string. It could be a string, but it could be a number. It could be an object. So the value of an object could actually be another object. The value of an object or the value of an array could also be another array. It could be null. It could be a Boolean value like true or false. And when you have a fairly complex JSON data structure you're working with, it might be a good idea to do a sanity check. 
And what I mean by that is you could put your JSON formatted data into a JSON validator to make sure all your brackets and commas and colons are correct because it's easy to make a mistake. And you can search online for a JSON validator, but the one I typically use is jsonlint.com. Let's go to that website and let's do a quick validation. All right, we're sitting at jsonlint.com and let me just paste in an example that we had earlier. This was an object. We had the name of first name and it had a value of Kevin separated by colon. We had a name of last name and a value of Wallace. Now notice this does not have any white space in it, but if you say validate JSON, not only will it come back and let us know that everything is correct, it's going to put in white space to make it more readable. So take a look at this. Now we've got the curly brackets on their own lines and each name value pair is on its own line. So no matter how complex our JSON data structure might look, remember it just breaks down into two data structures. An object, which is a name value pair, and an array, which is an ordered list of values.